Okay, guys, uh, we want to talk about the uh, bell curve uh, and normal distribution for a minute. Okay, I know it's a tricky subject, so we want to go through it one more time. All right, so this is our bell curve. All right, it is a symmetrical curve, and uh, the middle is right at X bar, which is our mean. Okay, so our mean is going to be right in the middle of our data set. Now, <clears throat> this is divided up into eight sections. Okay, there's four on each side of the mean. This section stops where we are one standard deviation less than our mean. Okay, the next one is our mean minus two standard deviations. And then the last one is our mean minus three standard deviations. Anything beyond this is going to be an extreme outlier. And the same goes for the other side, except we're adding our standard deviation to our mean. So X bar plus one standard deviation. The next one is X bar plus two standard deviations. And then the last section is X bar plus three standard deviation. Okay, now. The area under this curve represents 100% of our data. Okay, it's a total of one. This section here is 34% of the overall area. All right, and the other side is the same. So that's 34% as well. What this tells us is that within one standard deviation from our mean, whether it's uh, minus or plus, we're going to have 68% of our data. See? So 68% of our data is between our mean minus one standard deviation and our mean plus one standard deviation. The next sections going out have 13.5%. And it's the same on both sides. Now if you add these up, you'll find that 95% is going to be between our mean minus two standard deviations and our mean plus two standard deviations. Okay? So we're including a lot of our data here. The next sections going out have 2.35% each. Okay? So you see we're constructing our bell curve completely here. Now, just like these two, it tells us that 99 0.7% of all of our data lie between our mean minus three standard deviations and our mean plus three standard deviations. So that's almost all of our data. What this is down here is called the empirical rule. It's the empirical rule right here. the empirical rule. All right, so this is not going to change as long as we have a normal distribution. Okay? Now, this might be a little confusing just on x bar and x bar plus sigma and things like that. So we're going to look at an example here in just a moment. But the reason we bring this up is because what we're going to look at is the probability that any item in our data set lies between two boundaries. For example, if we want the probability, that's what the P stands for, that uh, any item in our data set that we pick at random is going to fall between, let's say, our mean and our mean plus a standard deviation. Now, what goes here is just x. Remember when we did our standard deviation calculation, 
the first column in our data set or the first column in our table was just our data set okay and that's what we're looking for we're looking for a single item in our data set we're going to pull it at random and the probability that's going to lie between these two things is going to be found here it means it would come out of this region because here's our mean that's our lower boundary and our upper boundary is our mean plus one standard deviation that's what this says our mean is less than or equal to the data we hope to pull which is less than or equal to our mean plus one standard deviation okay so the probability that the one we actually pull out of our data set comes from this region well it's given to us it's right up there it's 34 percent okay so that's one example now would you like some with numbers i'm sure you would so i got you covered what i'm going to do is i'm just going to erase all of this down here but it's going to mean the same thing in our example we're going to take the weights of monkeys okay weights of certain kind of monkeys okay it's going to give us a mean of 17 pounds and a standard deviation of three pounds so we're just going to relabel this our mean was here in the center that's going to be 17 pounds now if I want to fill in this way this is our mean plus one standard deviation so our mean plus the standard deviation so 17 plus 3 is going to give us 20 if I add one more standard deviation, I add another 3, it gives me 23, and then the last one will be 26. Going backwards, our mean minus 1 standard deviation, so 17 minus 3, will give us 14. Minus 3 again, I get 11, and one more time, I have 8. So now this gives us basically a number line and our data formed around it. Okay? It's still a normally distributed data set. So, if I want to look at basically the same thing, before I had the probability that it was between our mean and our mean plus one standard deviation. Well, now I'm going to plug in actual numbers to this. Our probability that it is going to be 17. Or 20. These are the same thing. Okay? This is our mean, and this is our mean plus one standard deviation. So we still want this area. Okay? Now we just have actual numbers to it. So let's say out of our entire population of monkeys that we're looking at, we're going to pick one at random. And we want the probability that that monkey uh, weighs between 17 and 20 pounds. Okay, this is the same question as before, just with actual numbers. If we look at our normal distribution, our bell curve, it tells us that the chance of that happening is still 34%. Okay? All we were doing was actually adding numbers to it. Now, let's look at a different example. We use the same data, same monkeys. But instead of the same boundaries, now I want to find one probability that the item that or the monkey that we pick is going to be less than or equal to 14 pounds. So we're looking for a very light monkey, obviously. All right? So we look at where 14 is on our uh, bell curve. And if we want less than or equal to, that means everything to this side of 14. So I want this region, this region, and this region. Okay? And now I just add up the percentages. These last regions are 0.15%. You don't get to those very much. Okay, those are extreme outliers in our set, but we're including them in this. 
because we want everything from 14 on down. So we add 13 and a half plus 2.35 plus 0 0.15. That's the areas of those regions. We add those together and we should get, this becomes 0, and we end up with 16%. Okay? Now, what if I change it around? Okay? This is 16%. What if I wanted the probability that the monkey is actually greater than or equal to 14 pounds? Well, I could spend my time adding all this up, but I know that from here over is 50, and this extra area here is 34. That would be a total of 84%. Or I could just take 100% and subtract what I had before. Okay? So if I know it's going to be less than or equal to 14, and it's 16%, then it's greater than or equal to 14, it has to be 84%. It means I'm starting here and I'm going that direction. Okay? So, basically the bell curve is just eight sections that you have to deal with. You have to know the percentages in each section. And the tricky part is this notation. Alright, it's the probability notation. Right, where you're picking a random data, po data point from anywhere in here and assigning it boundaries. Okay, once you know where the boundaries are and how to, how to define them, this becomes very easy. Okay, hopefully this helps clear some things up, gives you an example. Again, if you have questions, feel free to ask. You've got my email address, so shoot me an email. All right, see you guys.